Engineer 775 sharing with you the PLP Power Peak ground mount. This is a all steel galvanized ground mount and strut system with aluminum rails for attaching your solar panels. And we're just got here to our job, so we're getting set up here to put in the ground mount. And there's several different ways you can do it. What's nice is that PLP will give you a site specific drawing, that's what we're working from. And we're doing the layout here of our post holes and we usually use our laser to set our height of our post. That's kind of the most critical thing is setting the height of the post. This is the top of the post. Again, it's, if you've seen the other videos, very adjustable to get the array just to look beautiful. Uh, we like to use some gravel in the bottom of our holes. The drawing also calls for it. It just helps with adjusting the height a little easier than putting a, bro a rock or bricks in the bottom. So, simple system. You got you have the C channel. There's a lot of different, there's like four different ground mount designs. There's the aluminum, there's the steel, there's the driven posts. Um, when we do a small job like this, we can't justify driving these posts. And then we run into all sorts of rocks and things too. So what we end up doing is just using a mini excavator. And we just picked one up locally as a rental. And it happens to be one just like mine, so that's kind of cool. You can get an auger system to uh, drill these perfectly at two foot diameter, which is what they uh, are sized for. But we find we need a, a trencher anyway, so we just end up digging them and using a little bit more concrete than the design calls for, which doesn't hurt anything, a little bit more ballast. And so we end up digging the holes, and this will, this will get six holes here for six posts. And uh, so we're getting set up here to, to do our layout of where the posts go. We'll mark those with some marking paint. The laser is a critical tool to setting these up. So we'll kind of walk you through the process of how to install a PLP Power Peak. And this is the GSHC model, it's C channel model, these posts, the galvanized posts are. And then there's a splice kits, and we'll get into all that in the mid clamps when we get to the panels modules solar modules are on the trailer so we're getting ready to unload and start to prepare the holes so you can do it by hand but we don't recommend it it's uh, <laughs> some, some big holes so the first hole is going to be right around 64 inches deep two foot in diameter at least so for digging the holes we're just using a bucket yeah, they're not as clean as an auger, but we put a couple more yards of concrete in, plenty of ballast. And so on this uh, PLP Power Peak, there are six holes. And we had about a two foot drop in grade, but the minimum embedment on the, the lowest hole was 26 inches, and we're at 42 inches, so we're good there. So we just post, post off the post to hold them and get them ready for concrete. And uh, fortunately, we got a front loader truck coming in. We've got plenty of room to swing through. So we've just uh, started preparing our, getting our trenches ready. We'll actually stub up for power because we're gonna have uh, a two inch, we're gonna have a pull box here and a two inch conduit coming down. So we kind of get that set before the concrete truck comes in. And uh, he can, and it gives him a place to clean out too. So thinking of those guys as well all right so the laser is just uh, a wonderful tool We've got a self-leveling uh, Bosch laser on this job now and uh, posts are all kind of set the height is set within an eighth of an inch and we're getting ready for a concrete truck so if you get everything in the in place materials on site holes dug you can actually do the concrete and everything post set the same day weather permitting and everybody's schedule works out so we're getting ready to pour here we're ready and it takes about an hour for the truck to get here anyway so we're, we're in good shape so this is the first to me the most critical point part of the PLP power peak is getting the height right but then we also want to get the faces right and there's instructions on keeping the face so we put, put a string on the face of these and they'll plane out nicely even though there's a ton of adjustment It'll save you a lot of time if you get the height right first. 
the first one we did, we spent a lot of extra time. We got the height right, and uh, we didn't have to make any adjustments. So that is a possibility. All right, next step is concrete. Okay, always important time. Pouring concrete for our PLP Power Peak. They had to drive an hour and 20 minutes to get to us. I think it was a long, long ways. So another thing I wanted to tell you about the power peak is the time saving aspect. So we drove a long ways to get to this site. We got here this morning at 9 and it's 3 o'clock now. So in 6 hours we dug our holes, we started our conduit trench, we had a concrete truck come, we set our posts, poured concrete, made sure everything is heights are on the money, everything's good. So we're, we are in business. So anyway, that's uh, pretty exciting. All right, concrete is poured. So this is a, a great time saver compared to like a pipe mount, like an Iron Ridge type setup. Nothing wrong with those. This is just a, our preference. We got here at nine o'clock this morning and these posts were set. Uh, the height was set with a laser, everything was put in place, gravel under the posts, everything was plumb. And then the concrete truck came just now, just finished up. So it's 3 o'clock, so it's 6 hours upon showing up, digging the holes, setting the posts, getting everything good. That's not too bad. So first day on the job and the, the hardest part is done from the ground, ground mount standpoint. And uh, the girder building can be done in a few hours. We let these set up. Because we got these done in the afternoon, we probably will leave it alone for today and work on something else. And then we'll come back tomorrow morning when this is all set up. And we'll top off the holes with dirt, take, the po take obviously the 2x4s off, clean it up, grade, and get our, our conduit run to the house. But the power peak, can't say enough good things about it. And we'll be putting our struts on. I'll show you those right now. These are the strut assemblies. And uh, one thing I do like that you, every nut that you use for bolting the struts is a, is a, yeah, it's a seven eight socket. And there's not a mix and match of parts like we've dealt with on other uh, types of ground mounts. So these are the strut assemblies with the arms that are adjustable. Six of those, and then the aluminum rails, like I said before. So it's gonna, so it's a wonderful solar window. Gonna make a, a ton of power. Pretty excited. It'll be 11.2 kilowatts, and uh, we'll be building it tomorrow. So we'll show you the girder assembly, and then adding the rails and the splices. A lot of times we we leave the the rails long, and then we have an aluminum blade for a, a, our uh, bandsaw that we just cut it basically square everything up and cut it with that so everything is nice and true and in line all right well now it's time to get this power over to the house let's start digging again there we've removed all our supports and just a rough grade just to put dirt in a hole so we're not stumbling around here it's a lot of rocks we'll clean that up later every place is different so that's it Another thing to remember is the orientation when you put these in because it's a really bad day if these are turned around the other way. So uh, <laughs> that's actually facing, you'll see the diagram north facing this way on the installation diagram, but you want to make sure you don't turn that around. Okay, because that's a bad day. So tomorrow morning we'll bolt on the struts and uh, we're ready to build the solar array. Uh, we've got a lot of electrical work to do, but uh, not too much out here on the array. We're just going to put a pull box and a disconnect, but that's, there's a, depending on what type of inverter and power system you're going to attach to this, will determine what you do out here at the power peak. But that's it, folks. Six posts, all in seven yards of concrete, ready to go, ready to build. So 
the more time you spend getting the height right, you don't have to go crazy, but if you if you put the if you get the heights right and the face right, then you'll spend very little time making adjustments. But if you do mess up, they do they have provided a lot of adjustment for for you. So, okay, day 1, Power Peak ready to build. All right, this is Power Peak day 2 after a very heavy rain. We're grateful that the concrete truck made it in here. Uh, this, you can see now the strut system. Ooh, it's a little loud out here. But the strut system here is this girder and strut back to the post. Lots of adjustability, but we're basically just letting them hang, letting them sit down, and that way we don't need to really adjust. Let's see if that's true. Let's see how these things are playing and out. They seem to be playing it out really well. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera. But that's going to be super nice. And uh, so that's it. Girders up in about 30 minutes. Rails are going up. It's probably going to take an hour to build the complete ground mount today. Um, so you could really, we could have done this last night, but we were on to other things before the rain came. So again, just giving you kind of a step-by-step -step of how to put together the power peak. And they're splicing the rails. Now I'll show you the splice. You can get these in any type of configuration. These, this is a two by 18, meaning there's two panels in portrait. And there'll be a row of 18 down here for a 36 panel array. I think two by eight is the smallest that you can get it configured. For power peak without getting into a custom design and here is the uh here's the splice they've already covered it up but they've spliced it together with some it, it comes with the splices and the self tappers and we have found this a little welding oh, <laughs> thank you sir so uh you can see the self tappers coming from one side to the other and if you use a little like a swivel head welding clamp it really holds everything together makes everything line up a little easier we learned that the hard way on the first one, but that, that's just a helpful pro install tip. So they're getting ready to set this rail in place. It's been spliced, and we need to build four rails and splice four rails. All right. And here's the power peak with panels on. You can see the, the mid clamps that they use. It's been a good design, pretty easy to work with. Hold really well, integrated bonding. We haven't cut the rails off, I'll talk to you about that, but uh, we haven't wired anything up. We just uh, set all the panels and now it's, uh, now it's time to wire everything up. And of course everything gets wired depending on if you're going to run to uh, charge controllers or microinverters or optimizers or non, like we're doing with the Solark. We're not running... We just uh, do a series parallel combination and then run it to the inverter. There's no electronics out here in at the array. So pretty clean install. So we really, really like it for a ground mount. All right. We'll get, get a couple shots when we get done with it, how we uh, can attach. Well, the last one we did, we attached a lot of Unistruck because we set some SMA inverters out here. And we built a little unistrut frame, which was really strong because we ended up attaching it to the rails, attaching it to the posts, and that worked really well. On this one, we're just going to set a pull box here with two disconnects, and we'll be good. So then when it comes to uh, cleaning or dressing it up, we run our, we end up, you can, you can set the rails where you want. We just, we just set them long. It also allows us to alternate the spacing of the, of the splices a little bit if we want but in this case we just the instruction manual says it's three inches off of the clamp or four inches off the panel so we just uh, measure off the panel and uh, aluminum blade we use a bandsaw with aluminum blade and that helps really to get it done okay well that's a uh, that's it this is in a great location, really good solar window. But she's not going anywhere now.
uh, design. I think the base design is 110 miles an hour. And uh, there's really not a snow load per se in this location, though they do get snow. But they can design, they have a standard design for third, uh, zero, a snow load, 30, and 50. And I know there's some custom engineering that can be done as well. So that's the Power Peak really taking shape now.